Uh, today we're going to be talking about maximizing your email list strategies for remarketing, upselling, and more. My name is Arthur Kolker, and I am the founder and CEO of StayFi. And I'm really excited to be joined by Lauren Widmayer, founder of Studio 82. Do you want to just briefly introduce yourself, Lauren? Sure. Yeah, I am um, the founder of Studio 82 Digital. We are a digital marketing agency specifically for vacation rental uh, property managers. Um, we've been around for about four years at this point, but all of our team has extensive background in vacation rental marketing. So experts in the space. Awesome. And just to give a little more background on StayFi, our mission is to empower every short-term rental operator with the technology to achieve a more vibrant, independent, and more profitable brand. And the primary way we do that is through helping short-term rental operators not only collect guest data, not just from the booker, but everybody staying in a property, and then also helping them monetize that data with email, text marketing, and other guest engagement tools. And then we also provide a host of other Wi-Fi related benefits, things like occupancy and outage alerting, as well as remote Wi-Fi monitoring. So super excited to touch on a little bit about how StayFi can help you maximize your email list and then just give some of the top tips we see from across our users on how they're generating more revenue through email and text marketing. Yep. And then just a quick little bit more about Studio 82. So we're a full service boutique marketing agency in the space. Um, we create custom marketing plans for all of our clients. Uh, we primarily focus on SEO. So that's search engine optimization. That's optimizing your website to show up organically online. Uh, content creation, paid search management. So that would be like Google ads and bidding on specific keywords. Uh, social media advertising, primarily on Meta which is Facebook and Instagram. Um, and then we actually partner with Switchback Email Marketing to run all of our clients' email. And I know that's a good partner of yours too, Arthur. So they truly are Definitely. awesome. So uh, yeah, and we customize all of our all of our packages for you know what makes sense for, for the specific property manager. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the first area we're going to cover is how to maximize the impact of emails. And this has four kind of steps to how to get the most out of email marketing. The first one where, you know, which is the basis of how StayFi was founded was helping property managers and short-term rental operators collect everyone's email. So I think one thing to keep in mind is that unlike in hotels where on average you're going to have one or two guests in a room, the amazing thing with vacation rentals is that we can have three, five, eight, 15, 20 people staying in a property at one time. And we want to make sure that we can market to all of those individuals. And that includes marketing things like upsells during the stay, as then as well as obviously after the stay, getting them to come back and come back and book directly. Then we're going to talk about a little bit of how you can analyze this data. And Lauren will discuss a little bit about how email data can also play into social media marketing and PPC marketing. And then we'll dive into how to make a plan for each of the top channels that can drive more results for your business. And those would be email, PPC, social. So how does this data impact all of those? And then finally, give some content advice. Because I know one of the top questions we get at StayFi is, hey, I have this data. Now what do I do with it? And we'll show some examples of how short-term rental operators are taking this data and actually deriving value from it and generating revenue during and after the stay. First thing, collecting everyone's data. Uh, this is really the bread and butter of what StayFi does. And we really view three primary areas where you can collect actionable guest data that you can use for marketing purposes. The first is going to be the reservation data you already have in your property management software. So that would be tools like Guesty, Logify, Hospitable, Hostfully, Hostaway. The list goes on and on. And at StayFi, we integrate with most of them. And what that means is we'll actually go through all of the reservations in your property management software and any that have any real emails associated with them, we'll actually pull that data into our email tool 
so that any data you already have in your PMS will find it and will make it usable for email marketing. And that's really great because a lot of people don't realize uh, how much data they actually already have to start with. Uh, and we can go and find that data for you. And we obviously will weed out all the proxy and fake emails uh, that you might have got from Airbnb and Verbo or other sources. And we'll just go after those real emails you might already have in your PMS. The second and the tool that StayFi is most well known for is through the Wi-Fi. So the reason we collect data through the Wi-Fi, it is the one thing in your short-term rental that almost every guest will interact with seamlessly part of the natural journey of their stay. And it's a great touch point to collect information and also advertise your brand. So I'll show what that looks like in a minute, but the idea is guest joins the Wi-Fi, then we can collect data when they log into the Wi-Fi, just like you would have seen at a coffee shop or hotel or airport. We were the first company to bring that technology into the vacation rental space and make it accessible for any short-term rental operator to use. And then finally, the website is also a great place to collect det uh, details from potential guests, so people that are looking potentially to book. And in StayFi, we have all the tools you need to do pop-ups, email forms, basically any way that you would wanna collect data on your website. And then of course, you can automate an email that you send after you get the email through the website. So for instance, a good example would be like you've seen probably on a million e-commerce websites, hey, submit your email, we'll send you a 10% off code. You can automate that whole email process within StayFi to give that give get, to give that little extra incentive to capture an email while somebody's on your website looking at your properties to book. This is an example of how the Wi-Fi collection piece works within StayFi. So for guests, this is a very natural thing to do because it's something they've encountered in many other hospitality environments. Like I said before, a hotel, airport, coffee shop. Most of us have done this even you know multiple times a month, let's say if you're traveling. So guests will select the Wi-Fi network in the home. That Wi-Fi network can be branded to match your brand. So even across 20 properties, you can have the same Wi-Fi login across all homes. So you just let folks know join brand guest network. Then the splash page, which is here's what it looks like, will launch automatically on the guest device. And of course, again, can be branded and personalized by property. So you can even have image of the property they're staying in here, as well as text that relates to it. And of course, then we can customize what data we're collecting. So name and email is gonna be the most common, but we can also collect phone numbers for text and marketing, birth dates to use for other types of marketing or segmentation. So all of that you can do on the splash page. Then once the guest enters their information, we take them to the StayFi tool called the home page. And again, this is essentially a link tree for your listing, a place to have all the essential links you'd want a guest to discover when they log into the Wi-Fi to get all the information about this home. So you can link to a guidebook. Uh, you can have a link to book this specific property again, a link to your website. And then a link to some upsell tools I'll talk about later. And all of that is available right when the guest logs into the Wi-Fi. And remember, most of the people logging in are going to be the non-booking guests. So you've probably never had the opportunity to send this type of information to before. And then finally, you can automate some follow-ups to your guests after logging into the Wi-Fi. Things like a text message or an email that gets sent automatically when the guest logs in. And you can even include a link to your homepage or to other important upsell or guest books that you might be using so that your guests can easily find this valuable information throughout the whole course of this day right on their phone or other device. Just a quick little um, idea for your the homepage portion of that. I think this is such a great opportunity to promote your social channels. Um, and try to get people to engage with you organically during their stay. Um, you know, it's so hard as a property manager to collect that, you know, authentic content. And so the more that you can encourage someone to share that with you while they're on property, the better. So I think that would be a great opportunity to promote your Facebook, your Instagram, encourage people to, you know, at mention you in any sort of photos that they're posting throughout their stay. Yeah, one thing I do see some property managers do is 
using our texting tool, they'll send a text, or we call it a welcome text when the guest logs into the Wi-Fi and let them know about a limited, let's say time content contest, where if they post something on social media and tag them, you know, they could potentially win a discount off a future stay or a coupon code or something like that. So there's different points in this journey where you can incentivize guests to, you know, while they're sharing, you know, the great photos of their vacation on, let's say, Instagram, remember to tag your brand uh, and, you know, reinforce, obviously, that you're not just a generic Airbnb or Verbo, but you're your own brand and something that's worth sharing and with, you know, friends and family for future stays. Yeah. One other thing um, unrelated to the last slide, uh, Frederick said that the chat is actually disabled in the Q&A. Okay. So, so the Q&A section should definitely still be working. So. Okay. Okay, cool. So just, I guess, use that. Yeah. Uh, next part here is analyzing the data that you're collecting. So this can be actually one of the more overwhelming parts of this process, just because from the PMS, from Wi-Fi, from your website, you're going to be getting a lot of different and you could be getting a ton of guest data with a lot of other related fields. So it's important to kind of specify what are the most important things to be looking at and how can you segment your guests uh, to make the most of the data when you're targeting folks. I think one thing, and I know you want to talk about this, Lauren, is in our industry, uh, we have a lot of folks that operate in drive to market. So I'm kind of curious, how do you guys approach a segmenting by, you know, guests that could do a last minute stay versus folks that are flying into a destination and they need a little more time to plan their travel. Yeah, just to, you know, to add to that, I mean, I think it's really great to be able to see, especially, well, I mean, all the data is the valuable data, but location data um, is so great because if you wanted to run, let's say a last minute promo to drive markets, being able to segment that and then um, utilize that in an email campaign along with your paid search campaigns and your paid social campaigns is highly valuable. Another thing that we've seen people leverage here are uh, determining who are like frequent repeat guests and segmenting those out from folks that have just stayed maybe one time. I know that those are an audience where uh, who they see stay with them every year. And therefore you can send reminders, you know, six months in advance with more of kind of like a FOMO type messaging saying, hey, it's been six months since you last stayed with us. If you want to come again next year, you know, make sure to book now. And a really interesting thing I've seen property managers do is they actually open the calendar first on the direct booking website before they open it on the OTAs. So you can advertise to your guest list things like, hey, if you want to book and reserve your July 4th week, let's say, uh, right now, it's only available on the website, and it's not yet available on Airbnb or Verbo to keep pushing in guest mind uh, the value of booking direct over booking through a channel. Anything else you want to add here on segmentation? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I just think, you know, it. like I said, obviously, the location is important. Um, but even in terms of just not, you know, not just remarketing to those guests, but it can help inform actual paid search strategies and, you know, who you're targeting in terms of, you know, who's actually landing on your website and, um, you know, more just like location and demographic based targeting. So, I mean, just fully honing in on that for, and creating those audiences for paid search and paid social is super important. Yeah, I'm definitely going to touch more on those too, because I think that's one area where I see a lot of uh, property managers that are paying for social and PPC. They're definitely, if they use a little more segmentation and targeting, they can definitely cut down on waste. So yeah, we'll definitely yeah. dive into that later in the presentation. Now we're just going to talk a little bit more about the specifics of how you can actually approach email, SMS, upselling, PPC, which is paid search. Typically, we're talking about Google in that case, and then social ads. And so I'll cover email and upselling, and then Lauren will dive more into PPC and social. Uh, but these are definitely the top four channels we see property managers and operators using 
uh, to drive the majority of their direct bookings. Now, when it comes to email marketing, uh, there's a few things to just keep in mind is obviously one, we talked about collecting data, uh, but then the question is, how are you going to nurture it so that when somebody is in market to purchase a trip, they remember your brand. And that's where you can really think of email marketing inbox, kind of like a billboard. Because the reality is most of the year, this past guest, let's say, is not in market for a trip, right? Most of the year, you're not planning a trip. Um, but if you're sending a monthly email, let's say, when the guest is in market, then they'll remember your brand and come and book on your website, hopefully, if they find availability and that the pricing is better. Uh, so one thing that we like to do within StayFi or other email marketing tools is start really with a automation that can nurture your guest list. And what that means in practice is uh, emails sent over a regular period of time uh, to new subscribers, uh, whether it's an email every 30 days or emails over the course of a few weeks, that can really jumpstart your marketing and make yourself less dependent on sending, let's say, monthly newsletters, especially if you aren't quite there yet in terms of having the capacity to come up with regular content. So automated campaigns, definitely number one, then layering in newsletters. And then finally, we'll show towards the end of this presentation how you can actually look at the results and see how to measure uh, your email and SMS marketing. The real, the value of SMS, uh, which I think is, again, one of the more underutilized types of marketing in our space, is that they have much higher open and click-through rates than email. So typical email marketing campaign will see 15, 20% open rate, 1, 2% click-through rate. With text marketing, you're going to get 98% open rates and five, 10% click-through rates. And that means e-text especially can be a place to put high value promotions or promote things that are quite transactional. I.e., let's say you have a cancellation for a property, you can text your subscriber list and let them know, hey, we have this last minute opening next weekend, contact us here if you're interested in booking with this, let's say special promo. And nine times out of 10, we see our customers are able to fill that booking using their text marketing and going to their uh, audience of past guests, let's say before they go on to an OTA and try to cut the price to get that last minute booking. Uh, so it's a great way to try to fill that last minute availability with that kind of transactional high value text that you know your audience is going to see. These are the most common types of campaigns we see folks running in our email marketing tool. Uh, the first is one that pertains very specifically to StayFi, and that's a Wi-Fi welcome series. So you can imagine you have 10 guests in a property. They all log into the Wi-Fi. Remember, one of those was the booker. The other nine have never interacted with your brand. And most likely, if they booked on Airbnb, right now they're still thinking of you as a quote-unquote Airbnb. So the welcome Wi-Fi series is a great way to start differentiating yourself from a standard Airbnb listing by introducing your brand and also introducing the idea uh, that booking direct is less expensive. But since this is right at the beginning of the stay, it's very important to put high value content in this type of email. So things like recommendations, link to a guidebook, uh, explanation of how to contact your business if they need extra assistance during the stay. So it's really a way to start opening up that communication channel, not just to the booker, but to the whole reservation and then also introducing your brand. And then what's great about a welcome series is you can not just have the first email upon sign in, you can send an email in two days, five days, 30 days, 90 days uh, to keep that conversation going with guests and make sure you get those multiple brand impressions in so that they remember to refer you or to book again with you directly for the next day. Another important automation to put in place is when someone signs up on your website. Again, uh, what you don't want to do is have, let's say, a newsletter sign up on your website, but then not email those folks for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. The longer you let an email go stale in terms of not marketing to them quickly, more likely they're going to forget they subscribed and mark you as spam or 
unsubscribe when they finally do get an email. So just like for the Wi-Fi series, whenever you collect an email, you want to make sure you start marketing to that person right away. Because if you let the email go stale, high chance they'll mark you as spam or unsubscribe just because they're not going to remember that they opted in to begin with. Newsletter signups, that's where we see a lot of success with the give get. So you give that incentive on the website to sign up, then you deliver that promotion value, local area guide, could be any of those things uh, right away into their email inbox. The next one is booking anniversaries. So because we at StayFi are ingesting data from your PMS, we can see the dates that people booked. Um, and then you can send an email to those bookers when that date comes up again and let them know, hey, if you're looking to return, you know, here's a reminder to do that. So many vacation rental destinations are places that people travel once a year for during some holiday period and they come back every year. And you just want to make sure you're letting those people know the benefits of booking direct when it is that time to book their next trip and also making sure that they come to your website and don't just instinctively go to Airbnb at that time uh, and book again there. So again, reminding folks at key periods where you think or have a higher likelihood of being in kind of the booking phase or being in market all around, you know, 10, 30 days a year out, but like 30 days before that for when they book their last trip. Post-departure trip, drip, that's again, uh, we set that Wi-Fi welcome series. Now we want to set in some follow-up emails that could be getting a review, that could be, you know, 30 days out saying, hey, looking to come back to X destination, here are the benefits of booking direct, really hitting up the guests at that post-departure period to keep up the brand impressions and let them know the value of direct booking again and again, because it's going to take 5, 8, 10, 11 times to show a guest your brand uh, before they kind of key in on the fact that there are benefits to booking direct and will remember your website for their next day. And finally, if you are looking to start sending regular emails to your guests, one thing to definitely key into is introducing availability-based emails. So especially for smaller operators, one thing that we see people make the mistake with is they send an email about a property, a group of properties, but those properties are not available to book for months or might be totally full. And you don't want to set up a situation of disappointment where you are sending people to your website multiple times to look at these amazing properties, but every time they go, there's no availability, right? Yeah. So if you look at your calendar and you see that in the next month, these two properties have these specific dates open, put that in your email and say like, hey, this property is available from this weekend in September, and this properties are only one available in October. And that way you can kind of match your audience against their availability and find the folks who have intent to travel those dates, hopefully. They're the ones that are going to click through and hopefully reserve those listings. And so for smaller folks where you're managing five, 10 properties, and it's very easy to get a handle on your calendar, definitely key in on those available dates and include them in your emails. Anything yeah. else you want to add for like types of successful email canes you email campaigns you see on your end, Lauren? Sure. I was really just going to chime in and say, I mean, email marketing is a great place to repurpose a lot of the content that you're creating for your website in order to rank organically. Um, you know, a lot of things that we help property managers produce are, um, you know, top 10 things to do during X season and including that content in your email is a great way to drive value, add value to the email, get people to your website, you know, and once someone is on your site, it gives you the ability to remarket to them continually through paid search, paid social. So the more valuable content that you can provide someone via email, the better. Um, so it's a really a great way to leverage things that you're doing um, to grow your website organically um, within within email marketing as well. Um, yeah, yeah, to add to that, I'd say we see a lot of folks who operate in very seasonal markets uh, use that type of content of how do you get the people that maybe only ever come to your destination to ski 
to come there in the summer or to consider it in the shoulder season where bookings might be slower. Uh, so really, again, mirroring availability or weaker times of year against content to kind of inspire travel can be a great way to go again after the weaker periods of occupancy over your course of the year. Uh, because if you're always full for a certain month, yes, great to create content around it because you'll drive organic search. But you can think about, again, how to kind of compensate maybe for some of the weaker times of year and develop content around that and then send it an email to inspire travel outside of the typical windows where you might have almost full occupancy. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a, a really, really great point. Um, you know, additional content that you could create for your site. Let's say an example is like affordable times to visit Vail, Colorado and like a, why it's so great to visit in the fall because there's, you know, less crowds on the trail or whatever it is. Um, creating that content is not only valuable for your site, but obviously valuable as like a demand driver and information to include, um, you know, in your emails. Sweet. Um, yeah, just one quick case study here. I think a lot of people ask us, can email marketing drive bookings when I only have one, two, three properties? And the answer is 100% yes. Um, this is just a quick example of an operator that owns and operates three properties. Um, and when they started email marketing with JFI, they only had 10% of all of their bookings come directly. And after one year, it's now up to 25%. And they, as part of that strategy, was honing in on those orphan nights, last minute availability, and openings in the calendar. Uh, because they were able to kind of capture guests that were coming back a few times a year and then really push hard and say, hey, we have these nights available and it will be cheaper to book on our website than to go for those same dates on the OTA. Uh, and here they're just using their basic owner res website. They don't have anything super fancy, just the one that came with their PMS. So totally possible to do and have success with this, whether you have a thousand properties or just one, two or three. And I'd say the other thing here is because they own the three properties, the benefits financially are even greater. So obviously, if you're doing property management, you're splitting the benefits of direct bookings or increased occupancy with your owners. When you own the properties, right, all the benefit goes to you. So even this increase in uh, going from 10 to 25 percent, you can see here over one, two, three years what that actually spells out for Crystal Shoals financially. And what's interesting, if you look at year two here, um, OTA savings are the second biggest area here, 3679 But the most of the revenue they achieved was through filling nights that otherwise would have gone on non-booked. And that's where, again, uh, really keying into your open dates and marketing those is how you can sell nights that either would never have gone sold or you would have had to cut prices through your pricing tool to get filled. And so definitely, uh, if you're getting started out on a smaller end, most of the revenue that we see customers generate uh, from a tool like Stay Fine Email Marketing is from filling in those gap nights and then saving on OTAs is number two. And a lot of people are splitting those savings with guests, obviously. Uh, so they get a cheaper price and you end up with more money in your pocket at the end of the day. The other thing I'll just touch briefly upon here is upselling uh, and how you can use email and text marketing to increase uh, the conversion rate for upselling. So there's in StayFi, uh, but there's tons of tools with like guidebooks, for instance, that have upsell features. So this will apply to all of them. It's how do you get those upsells in front of more guests? So number one way uh, that we see people pushing up sales today is they go through their PMS messaging and they send details about early check-in, late checkout, tour and activity partners, all of that through the PMS message. And again, you're getting that in front of the booker. Um, with StayFi, of course, you can then also place those on your homepage. And then again, using email and text, those triggered messages when the guest logs into the Wi-Fi to market those upsells to the non-booking guests. 
we know that bookers sometimes are not great about sharing information with the whole party. Um, and so if you do have partners that offer boat rentals, and I'll talk about how you can do some of that through Stay Fine in a moment, things like that, or tours in your area that you love, or purchasing late checkout, right, which we have a partner that can help you do that if you don't have one already, all of that you can get in front of the whole guest group right when they log into the Wi-Fi, and that's going to increase your overall conversion rate for amenities and upsells. Quick question on the mm -hmm. on the last slide: How customizable is the is the homepage, and are there analytics to show what people are engaging with? Yeah, so the the homepage is totally customizable. We have a bunch of buttons that we recommend that you feature things like book again, visit our website, but you can add any custom buttons you'd like and they can have different URLs or different PDFs you can upload based on the property. So it's all unique by property. You can set different values for where these links go. When it comes to analytics, not so much today. Um, there's analytics with some of the partners. So you can see how many people are purchasing what items, uh, but in terms of how many people click each link, not yet. Okay. Uh, within uh, StayFi, we have two upsell partners that are free uh, for everyone to use. So if you don't have an upselling platform already, these are two great options to consider. One is called the HostCo, which you can actually sign up for within StayFi, and it's totally free. And in the HostCo, you can sell your own services, as well as there are partner services that you can get a commission if someone purchases. The most popular services that folks offer where they make the most money at the end of the day is early check-in and late checkout. What's great about the host code is those are all requests that you can approve or deny. So you don't, if you can't actually service it for this property, uh, you don't have to approve it. And you can set the pricing as well as what definition those products have, like two, three hours, four hours, whatever it is, what the time will actually be. Obviously, early check-in is one that you would have to send to the guests prior to the stay through your automated messaging. But late checkout is one that we see a lot of people sell uh, because they're advertising to the whole group. And then the other vendors they have in here are totally location dependent. So in some locations, you'll see a ton of third-party services where you get a commission, some less so. Other services we see here are mid-stay cleans. That's another one as well as like rental items. So if you have your own kayaks, bikes, all that stuff, you can have the waivers and instructions for how to access rentals during the course of the stay. So all of that you can do in the HostCo. And then using StayFi's tools, obviously you can get that HostCo store in front of everybody there. The second partner that you can sign up for in StayFi is Viator. They're the largest tour and activity marketplace in the world. They're owned by TripAdvisor actually and you'll get an 8% ref share on any tour activity that someone books after clicking a link within 30 days. So this is a fantastic one where if you don't have any local partners already, Viator is going to have options in almost any destination in the world in terms of tours that you can advertise to your guest. Uh, and then you can feature those. Again, you can even get the links through the affiliate program to send to guests one-on-one -on -one if you're giving them advice during the course of the stay. And then, of course, obviously, you can select which ones you want to feature in StayFi's homepage. So you can make sure your guests, A, have a wonderful time, and B, uh, make a little money if guests do end up booking any of the services there. And they even have things like, um, like car services and things like that if you're in a remote destination. So, you know, hey, how do you get here? Okay, you can use this service and then link it through Viator. Uh, so lots of great ways to leverage that. And also, uh, you can leverage it in content. So if you're building that article that's, you know, 10 things to do in Vail in the off-season or in the cheapest time of year, and three of them are experiences in Viator, you can include those in blog posts and even monetize that content. And of course, there are other upselling tools we see people link to all the time, whether that's a Minoan store, other upsell platforms, upsell platforms that are native to their PMS, uh, all of that you can use the homepage to advertise, not just to the booker, but everyone there, and then use email and text to make sure they have access to it during the entire course of their stay. Now, Lauren, I'll hand it over to you to talk a little bit more about PPC advertising. 
Sure. Yeah. So, um, Paid search adverse advertising or PPC um, typically is well mostly done on Google, although you can do it on Bing as well, but Google is the biggest search engine. So that's where we focus the majority of our, our spend and recommend that people focus the majority of their spend. Um, but pretty much what you're doing is really bidding on very specific keywords that you want your brand to show up for online. Um, a lot of times, um, especially if you're a larger property manager in the area, OTAs will actually bid on your brand and show up above you in um, in search results. So you wanna make sure that you are um, also bidding on your brand, showing up above the OTAs and not losing any traffic to them. Um, PPC is actually, it's a really great, great tool um, for conversion because, or we see a lot like a higher conversion rate from paid search um, compared to some other social channels, just because um, people are, in market for vacation rentals. Like if they are searching for book a vacation rental in X destination, um, they're actively searching for that. Unlike, you know, if you're bidding on a specific audience and it's more brand awareness in, you know, paid social, it's a little bit different. Um, one thing I do want to point out with paid search is you actually can load email lists to Google and they can match email lists. So if you wanted to use that as a specific audience um, for, for let's say a display campaign, you absolutely could. Um, you have to have a decent size list to do that. But, um, but yeah, and then I do wanna say to paid search, definitely, you know, it's not for, for everyone. You have to have the inventory to be able to support it. Um, you know, if you're bidding on like a, a keyword like, vacation rentals in the Outer Banks, let's say, um, you know, and you're competing against Airbnb or a really large property manager that maybe has 500 units and you only have five, it's probably not worth the click um, that you would have to pay just because it, the opportunity for them to book something on a site that has 500 properties or Airbnb is much greater than the likelihood that they're going to book one of your five. Um, so you need to be aware of, you know, does it make sense for my brand? It doesn't always, um, but, but yeah, it is a very effective tool for getting conversions on your site and driving traffic. What's like the general size of property manager where you think paid Google ads is worth experimenting with and starting to invest in? Do you have a general sense or it really depends on location? It depends on location and how competitive the market is and, um, you know, how much you're going to be paying, you know, what the cost per click is and all that kind of stuff to, to really see if it's worth it. But I would say, you know, if you have 50, if you have 50 or more properties, absolutely, you should be incorporating paid search into your, into your marketing strategy. And this is one where, again, I think it's really important to have an email capture plan in place on your website, right? Because this person's in market, you paid to have them come to your website so you pay for them to click. Now, if they're gonna abandon your website, we want to try to at least get their email because then you can offer you know, right away that extra incentive to come back and book and maybe increase the value of each person that you pay to come to your website. Exactly, yeah. Do you, do your pop-up tools, um, are they, can they pop up based on like exit intent or is it timing based or can you set it up it's timing and page based. Okay. Um, I don't think you can do exit exit ones. I find those actually a little annoying, but uh, <laughs> everyone has a different opinion on things like that. Yeah. Uh, I find that the uh, the general pop up or form one, especially if the pop up is, let's say maybe you don't want to give up a discount because you don't want to cannibalize traffic uh, or cannibalize bookings with an extra discount. I find a lot of them work really well with content. So if you have that, you know five things to do in the outer banks or like those kind of things that can be a great give get type of item that doesn't actually cost you anything at the end, at the end of the day. Yeah. Or maybe even like a, a value add instead of a discount, like a welcome yep. amenity or something like that, where you're not discounting your rate, but it's an affordable way to incentivize someone to give you an email. Sure. Um, and then I'm going to focus more, I think, uh, the next couple slides on social marketing, just because I think it, it really aligns with a lot of what we're doing in email in terms of nurturing guests and following them throughout the guest journey, you know, prior to booking and then after booking and really continuing that brand awareness. Um, 
So this slide is really focusing on what you can do in, in social media advertising. So this is behind the scenes, you know, not your organic, your organic everyday posting. This is, um, you know, in your Facebook business account, what you can do is actually upload your, your email list here too, and it will match audiences. Um, but what you can also do is create lookalike audiences. And so based on that guest list that you uploaded, Facebook can actually find people that are similar to the people that have booked with you in the past. And so it's a great way to reach people that are like people that have stayed in your property before. Um, it's a really cost-effective way to reach a really large audience. Um, and then, you know, another thing you can do is, you know, along with your drip emails that you have going to um, people who have checked out, is it just continuing, let's say three months after the fact you want to do um, like a rebooking campaign and, you know, you're featuring content, targeting that, that past guest list and saying like, here's a reason to come back during shoulder season, or here are some other new homes we have in our portfolio you should check out. So it's a really great way to nurture your guests and get them to come back. Yeah. And Stayfy, we have two ways to do this. One is create a custom audience in face and meta business tools and then upload your email list, and then it will match as many as it can. Fortunately, they don't tell you how many match anymore like they used to, uh, but it will match a good percentage, and then you can target those email lists. Um, important to keep in mind that you can either, when even when you target the exact email list, there'll be this button that's like, I forget what the name of it, but it's like Reach Plus, where it kind of does the lookalike stuff built in. Yeah. You may want to be, have a campaign that's only to the actual people that have stayed with you, which can be super valuable. Maybe you want to spend more there. Um, and it, there probably won't be that many of them, even if you're large. So like the amount that you can even feasibly spend is not that great. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have like a campaign that's very like come and book again, and you want it to be just those people, just make sure that you don't, that you unclick that button because Facebook's always trying to make you spend more. Uh, and so they want to expand the audience as much as they can. And you kind of have to, be a little knowledgeable about that and disable those things within Facebook. Agree. Oh, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like you have to just be careful if like I really only want the people in my list or I want the list plus some extra people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is you can actually place a Facebook pixel on that homepage that everyone's taken to after they log in. Uh, and the Facebook pixel will kind of create this audience dynamically. So mm -hmm. instead of having to upload every month, like your list, uh, those people will get audit added immediately to the marketing list the moment that they get on the Wi-Fi. That can actually enable you to do something like you have this campaign running literally the moment after they log into the Wi-Fi and they go on their Instagram account, they'll see your ad. Mm -hmm. A little spooky, but that can just be a way to get those extra brand impressions up front. And again, similar with that audience doing advertising, you just really have to Make sure you have the right settings in your account, whether you want to do just this audience or this audience plus lookalikes. Yeah, I will say in order to for Facebook to run a remarketing campaign, you do have to have a certain amount of traffic. Um, so if you don't have, you know, over a thousand, I think it is uh, mm -hmm. Visitors, it, it won't run the campaign, so you just need to keep that in mind with the Facebook pixel. But that's a really great point too. Yeah. So this one, um, I just wanted to talk through. So, you know, Facebook is always running, or they're trying new things all the time. But um, they have these new, newer ish uh, lead generation ads, and what this does is it it adds a form natively within. Um, Facebook or Instagram where they can share your email. Uh, and this case study I have right here was for Alexis Vacation Properties. Um, and what they, they are very brand new to the vacation rental space, but they have very luxury properties and they're launching a, um, a loyalty program. And what they wanted to do was grow their email subscriber list and uh, because they had no one on it. Um, and so even before they launched, we created this campaign to say, sign up now, you're going to get X, Y, and Z benefits by being the first on our loyalty program. 
And we ended up getting, it was 620 email addresses, qual qualified email addresses. Um, and it ended up costing, I guess, $3.83 for each of those, $3.83 for each of those leads. So um, Arthur, you and I would need to talk about how to get those email addresses directly from, because when they, they're they collected in Facebook, they're logged in Facebook, you have to export them and, and load them, which is kind of unfortunate, but. I so. think there is a way to connect them to our email tool, okay. either through Zapier or natively. But yeah. this, I think I've only ever seen someone ask about this once, and I think we had a solution, but that that's a... Uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the outcome was, but I know we did find a way to make it automated because again, obviously if someone fills out this form, ideally we would send them an email right away, right? And not have to like upload it and then send it later because exactly. all that is going to increase open and click through rate. I'm curious, mm -hmm. how did you like to find the audience for this one to kind of make sure you were narrowed down on the right type of people for this? Yeah, so I think actually, if, uh, I'm wondering if, no. Maybe if you click to the next slide, I do talk about building your audience a oh, little bit. Go. Yeah. Um, this one isn't specific to Luxus, but it just kind of outlines some of the things that you can do in building an audience. Um, for Luxus specifically, we were targeting um, really top like household income and people that were interested in travel and people that travel international internationally and a bunch of other really like luxury type um travel or luxury lifestyle interests. Um, the audience I actually have here on the right is kind of interesting just because I, I think this was for Lexus too, but they are also trying to grow their, their actual inventory. And so we were targeting people, you know, top 10% of income, they're interested in creative real estate and, and investing in that kind of stuff. So you can get really, really granular with how you can, um, build your audiences. You can also include, you know, location-based um, targeting in here as well. Luxus is more of a national brand, so we just targeted all of the United States. Um, but let's say you're in one specific location, um, you can absolutely narrow it down. And, you know, if you wanted to run a campaign, I know we had mentioned it earlier, you know, a, a last minute drive market campaign that you want to run like an email newsletter for and then create a targeted social campaign. Um, you know, you can pick the specific markets within a radius that you want to show your ad. Um, but yeah, this just outlines, you know, all the different different ways that that you can uh, build audiences. So the past guest list, the pixel, which would is what Arthur was talking about with the retargeting. Um, you can target people who already follow your brand on Facebook and, and Instagram, create lookalike audiences, which we already touched on, and then the custom, um, you know, interest, demographics, behavior, age, that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, I mean, the possibilities here are really endless. And then you can even take those top ones and then segment them down by the other field. So mm -hmm. um, I think I think the great thing about Facebook advertising, too, is that, well, it's definitely, in my opinion, I don't know if you agree, it's more approachable to learn on your own than PPC. I find PPC to be challenging uh, for people to go in and start without relevant experience. I think the Facebook one is a little easier to like self-serve if you want to invest some time into learning it. I don't know in terms of what you think is more difficult to have success with than the other, but I, I kind of think Facebook's a little more approachable. Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> that's kind of a hard question because I yeah. do think that actually Facebook is kind of Facebook business manager is kind of hard to navigate. It's complicated. They've made um, it very, it's gotten much complicated over time. So yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I will say you can reach a much broader audience in meta in Facebook and Instagram advertising than you can in Google. Um, and typically you're paying, you know, in, in Meta, you're paying to reach a specific audience, you know, in Google, you're paying for a click and those clicks can be quite expensive. And so if you don't really know what you're doing in Google, I mean, I just, just don't. Do you can spend a lot of money and get no results because yeah, I think the other thing to keep in mind is all these platforms, they're not really your friend. They want, they want you to get just enough results to continue, but they also want to make you spend as much money as you can. And so you're kind of sometimes battling with the 
platform's recommendations because their recommendations are not always what you should be doing, right? So it's it's an interesting give and take with with those two. Um, Did I freeze? I think so, but you're back now. Okay. Um. Oh, okay. So um, the next slide, I just wanted to, to really showcase the difference between what's paid and then what's organic. Um, so paid ads are truly just running in the background. Those are the audiences that you can select. Organic is what you're posting on your page, um, just ongoing to your audience and um, just the difference in, in what that kind of means. So obviously organic posts are very limited, like you're only reaching people that are following your specific page. Uh, you're showing up mostly chronological in someone's timeline. Um, you know, if you do post more frequently, the algorithm will rank you a little bit higher in people's feeds. But if you're paying, um, obviously, like Arthur said, the, Face or Facebook and Instagram, they want to take your money. So obviously they're going to display your ads so that they can take your money. Um, but that also means that you're actually showing up in people's news feeds. Um, and then the next thing I just wanted to touch on on the next slide is, um, and this is more toward the, the organic side. Um, so you know, what you should be posting is uh, the rule is 80-20. So 80% of your, your content should be informative and engagement. Um, so just more like area focus, like what, what's the weather today? What's happening in town and that kind of stuff versus, um, you know, an offer or a promotion or a discount, uh, even featured properties. Uh, the majority of your content should really be focused around, um, the authentic experience in your destination. Yeah, unfortunately, the what TikTok, Facebook, Instagram are going to actually show people, it's not going to typically be promotional content. They don't love it. They want the stuff that people are going to click on and watch and stay engaged with. So if you really want to grow your audience organically, that's what you're going to have to lean into. And, and I'm sure if you go into, you know, TikTok and see what's successful there it's going to be all that kind of you know authentic experience type content not the, the promotional stuff exactly yep um um so this part i wanted to touch on just um you know i talked about if there's a way on that on the home page to really promote your social channel so people can engage with you while they're in your specific destination at your property um, resharing user generated content is, it is huge and so valuable for property managers who are so stretched thin and don't have the time to collect all of that content. Um, so yeah, anytime you can encourage people in a post day email or while they're on property to tag you or mention you in, um, on your social channels. I mean, that's amazing content for you. You just need to reach out and say, hey, this great photo. Can I repost it? And it takes you no time. And it's that really great, um, more engaging content that people want to see. And do you see people have much success with giving, you know, stays to influencers or some, doing this in a more intentional way? We actually recruit people to come and do this for you. Um. Yes and no. I mean, also it depends on the brand. Um, I would say, I mean, in, it depends on the influencer, but influencers yes. usually want the moon. <laughs> yeah, right. So you have to be willing to kind of bend to whatever their needs are um, and then what their contracts are and make sure that you actually have full access to the images that they're capturing during their stay. So you just need to be really clear on what the agreement is with the influencer. Um and whether it's really worth the value that you're you're trading so yeah i've seen this go two ways um but i have seen folks do influencer campaigns where because i think it also mirrors up if you have very spectacular or unique properties right so it's also you have to kind of be realistic about like is what I'm offering going to shine in this campaign? But I've seen people do with unique, interesting properties where they book direct for the rest of the year and they have no more availability because of one campaign. But that's really mirroring those two things together, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. If your property is like typical for that area, you know, what are you going to really get out of it? Right. Um, so I think it just, it just depends on also on the inventory that you have, but uh, seen incredible success and also people who pay a social influence or give them a free stay and get nothing. Right. So you just have to be careful that you're paying for the right thing and that, you know, what you have is something that they can realistically market to the, to their audience. Exactly. Yeah. And then the last bit is, is truly just making sure, um, you know, especially if you're running social ads that, that you're engaging with your audience online. Um, people, it's honestly kind of shocking how many people will just comment on a post and ask you a, a random question about the area. Um, and so it's really great to be able to have someone that's monitoring and just like responding to those to those quick inquiries. You know, it shows that you're authentic, you're available, you're engaged, you're a real business. And so, um, and there's a real person behind your business. So uh, yeah, just making sure that you're staying active, responding to messages, responding to comments is 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 very important. Last section here is just a little bit more on general kind of what to put in content, kind of what messaging to do. Um, I think for email, especially really centering every email around kind of one key message here. Uh, this you can see here is a newsletter that one of our customers sends. Um, and every newsletter that they send out monthly is anchored around one piece of blog content. Uh, so again, that's, you know, you're creating content to drive SEO, uh, but then we're gonna reuse that content in an email. And then the other points are kind of things that they hit upon in all of their messaging. So they have these engaging images, right? Uh, they always talk about property management services because they're always looking for owners. And then kind of one of their key differentiators is this luxury concierge. So they like to mention that in all uh, emails as well. Uh, so they can really start to differentiate again you know, you'll get these extra services if you book directly versus through an OTA. Um, finally here, I think one place where people get tripped up is incentives. Um, one thing to keep in mind is how, what is your pricing strategy direct versus OTAs, i.e. is there always a delta between your OTA price and your direct price? And if there is, Maybe that is sufficient incentive to just remind people that, you know, it's this price on Airbnb and Verbo and this price here on our website. Other folks, actually, what they do is they keep those prices closer and that gives them more room to do discounting so they can send a promo code in every email or send a promo code in text marketing to really push when they need those extra bookings direct uh, and therefore create that value. So, again, depending on types of properties, whether discounting is something you want to do or not, uh, it really also connects back to your pricing strategy and how you're going to kind of differentiate between yourself and OTAs. Some other ideas that we've seen people experiment with are other types of promotional value, which we talked to, touched upon before. Version might be, okay, book X number of nights, get an extra night free. We see that often in hotel marketing or offering services that, so if you book direct, you get the late checkout, early check-in, uh, but you don't get that when you book through an OTA, let's say, or complimentary activities is another one where, okay, you're gonna get this gift basket if you book direct, or you're gonna get X dollars towards this activity in our destination. Um, and that way you don't, again, have to fill with rates. You can give value other ways uh, to drive those repeat bookings. Uh, last bit here is, I think one thing to keep in mind is whatever type of marketing you're going to do, you should have some plan of how you're going to analyze the results. I think one of the best tools and free tools is Google Analytics, uh, which can help you measure all sorts of things. And one thing that you just want to make sure that you have enabled in Google Analytics uh, for your website is e-commerce tracking. Uh, I know it's not something that's natively available in every property management software is kind of out of the box website. So something that I would definitely ask and push them to add, they may say they have Google Analytics, but do they have the e-commerce portion? 
what the e-commerce portion is going to unlock is these columns here on the right side where you can see transactions and revenue. So you can actually get revenue reported back into Google Analytics as well as actual purchases on your website. So that what that can do is help tie specific campaigns to actual revenue. On the left here, you'll see the source slash medium. Uh, so direct is going to be people that just type in your website. Google organic is going to be searching for your brand or for you, go through your blog post to find your website. CPC, that's going to be the pay per click ads uh, that we were just discussing. And then email here is going to be obviously email marketing. What's great about our email tool, right, is we already append all the links in your emails with all the tracking codes you need to appear in Google Analytics. And then the right here, you can see the transactions and revenue generated by these different channels. I think one thing to keep in mind with Google Analytics is in this view, it's always the last click. So that, that means that literally someone clicked on an email, then made the booking in the same session or clicked on your Google ad and then made the booking. Uh, and so it's gonna typically undercount the value of these channels because we know that people don't always transact on the last click. They may click your email, then go to your website the next day and those things are not connected. And so another way to look at this is this channel grouping path in the bottom left. Uh, and this gives you an idea of how someone could, let's say number five is, they did email direct three times, then did email, then did the booking, or they did direct email three times and then directly to your website and did the booking. So up above, uh, it's gonna say in direct, but maybe the email played a key role in that pathway. So that's really where email has that billboarding effect advantage. Or maybe it's because they saw your email every month that then when they actually wanted to do the booking, they came directly. And so therefore it's gonna appear as a direct booking in your Google Analytics, uh, but it's a booking that would not have happened uh, without the email. And then in the bottom right is a section of Google Analytics where it shows you the details around email marketing. And because we're appending your emails with all the right links, you can see on the right where it says campaign, we're actually tying back revenue to specific email campaigns. Uh, so this can get extremely interesting if you actually wanna know which emails generated the most revenue and it can help you inform your strategy of you know how should you be doing email marketing going forward, what type of content is converting. Mm -hmm. One of the yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to quickly add um, in terms of, you know, what you're talking about in the bottom left and the assisted conversions. Um, if you are paying for any sort of social, that's typically where that shows up is as an assisted conversion. It's pretty rare that someone will click on a Facebook ad and then immediately convert on your website. So the last click conversion rate from social advertising is typically a lot lower than some other channels. Um, PPC typically has a, a bit a better conversion rate because people are actively searching for vacation rentals in X destination. Um, so just keep that in mind if you do decide to run social ads that the last click conversion is going to be quite a bit lower than some of the other channels. So now, um, yeah, just, oh, I know we're a little over time, so I'll just cover this quickly. Uh, and I talked about this before. Um, you know, why are you doing all this marketing, right? Like it's obviously at the end of the day going to generate a positive ROI for your business. And the the easiest place that you're going to generate the most money is to increase your overall occupancy rate without lowering your rates. Uh, and that's something that this direct marketing can 100% do, whether that's strategic targeting of certain dates, uh, content around shoulder seasons, right? Every booking we get that wouldn't have happened otherwise is huge benefit to your bottom line. Second is going to be OTA fees, right? Over time, as we shift to more direct bookings over OTA bookings, uh, the profitability of each booking is going to go up. Uh, and then, you know, by honing in your skills here, you can start increasing your conversion rate, improve the effectiveness of your campaigns over time. So that's where the measurement really comes in, is that if you're not measuring, you're not going to know what's working and what's not, and therefore it's going to be harder to improve over time. Um. Thank you again for attending. We do have a promo code. So if anyone's interested in StayFi, they can use this code, Studio82, uh, on our website to get 50% off the first three months of StayFi service. 
And then Lauren, what's the, the best way for anyone who's interested to reach out to you guys? Sure. Yeah. Sorry. I should have included that on the last slide. Um, just studio 82 digital.com is our website. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a very easy contact form. Feel free to reach out. You can also email me directly at Lauren at studio 82 digital.com. I'm happy to answer any questions and always, uh, you know, even just hop on a call and chat about marketing. So and I see we have a few questions. I know we're over, but I'll just, uh, these are pretty straightforward to answer. So I'll just go through these quickly. Someone asked about customization on the homepage. Uh, I would say recommend if you need help, email support at stayfi.com and they can get on a call with you and show you how to do that. Um, someone asked if they would recommend filtering out emails from guests. If you know, I've had a bad experience at the house. I would say filter out guests that you don't want to have come back. I would ask like, how do you know that? Maybe you do want to not subscribe them or maybe they would not subscribe normally. So yes, that may be something you would consider doing. And it's very easy through Stayify to unsubscribe specific guests based on the time and property they were in. Yes, Kevin, we will send this recording out via email and it will be on Stayify's YouTube channel. Um, then someone asked, is there a chat or reach out function in the app? Not exactly sure what they're referring to. Within StayFi, we don't have any guest communication tools that are meant for one-to-one -one communication. So everything that we do in StayFi, uh, we, if there is, let's say, the possibility that they're going to write back, it's always going to push them to go and message you in whatever preferred uh, channel you have for just talking with guests, which everyone handles a little differently. Um, sweet. Yeah, and thank you. That was all the questions. Thank you again, Lauren, so much. Uh, we had a lot to talk about. I think we covered a lot of great things. So, so happy to do this and hopefully not our last webinar together. I love it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, like I mentioned, this will be available as a recording. And yeah, thanks again and have a great rest of your week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.